Good morning. Good morning. And whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, welcome to the First Congregational Church of Woodstock. It is truly a joy to come together for us to be this community that shares the warmth of God's love, especially on one of these incredibly beautiful but chilly autumn days. So thank you for coming and joining us that we may worship this God who is love, who creates us and meets us wherever we find ourselves on the journey. I um, encourage you that if you have any updates to your contact information, if you have any questions, or if you have a prayer request, you can fill out the pew card. You can give it to me or one of our deacons. You can put it in one of the offering plates that you will find at either of the entrances this morning. And I encourage us to come back together and center ourselves to begin worship. Um, as we listen to uh, this quiet music, and I encourage you to reflect on our question of the day. Where does your life feel most out of control, exhausting, and or unbalanced? And what might it look like if rather than trying to get back into balance, maybe we just simply tried to recenter ourselves in our lives on this God who is love? Will you join me in our prayer for the day that you will find in your bulletin? God of aliens and strangers, make the doors of this church wide enough so that all find a welcome, a home, a haven, a heart. Christ of the near and those who are far off, make our hearts wide enough so that all might find a place in this household of faith welcoming spirit of saints and sinners, open our arms wide enough so that all, the guest, the neighbor, the child, the widow, the politician, the homeless, the brother, the sister, may be embraced by your love and grace. Amen. I invite you to rise, you're able, for our opening song. It is Let Us Break Bread Together, number 618, and we are doing verses 1, 2, and 3 this morning.
So love is what it is all about, right? And um, part of the way that we love one another is that we listen and hold space. We celebrate the joys with one another. We also comfort one another in our times of concern and need. And I invite you to join me in the spirit of prayer, and we will end using the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to use whatever language or version that you would like to do. Let us join together then in prayer. Hey, God. This is a wonderful, beautiful day that you made. It is chilly, and it reminds us of the vibrancy of all of life. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for life and love and the ways that in the gatherings of friends and families and the support of one another that we are reminded of the kind of love that you have for us. We know that as we gather, there are those who are challenged challenged with illnesses of the mind, the body, and the spirit, challenged facing storms of life, the storms and the catastrophic disaster that we saw from Ian and the flooding around the world, the storms that we face from the forces of fear and violence, poverty, racism, and oppression. We ask, Heavenly Creator, that you continue to encourage us and empower us and embolden us that we continue to see everyone as your beloved children of the living God, that we see and meet strangers as though they were long lost and yet to be friends, that you encourage us that despite our own fears and busyness, that we make place and time and space to break bread with one another, to open up our lives, to simply make space to be present and to listen. Creator God, we know that even when we can't figure it out or know how it all works or it feels like our lives and the world is spinning out of control, that somehow you are yet at work in us and through us in the power of your Holy Spirit continuing to work all of these things together for good. We know that your way is the way of love because you came to us in the one, Jesus, who is the Christ, who gave us this prayer that we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us the trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our prayer response today is the Canticle of Love. You'll find it um, in the hymnal number 646. Love be genuine and live in harmony. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Outdo one another in showing honor. Be humble and never conceited. Love, Love is stronger than death, and jealousy is cruel as the grave. Floods cannot drown, and wealth cannot hide. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Put 
love above all else, let Christ's peace rule your hearts. Always be forgiving as Christ has forgiven you. Love is not jealous or boastful, arrogant, rude, or stubborn, irritable, resentful, or possessive. Love is patient and kind. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Do not love in word or speech only. Love also in deed and truth. Receive each other in sincerity. Find mercy and grow old together. Love is right. It bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. For love is faithful and endless. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. When the Lord builds the house, the labor is never in vain. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Those who serve the Lord are redeemed. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Loving God, open our heart and mind to these holy words and how they may speak to us today in our own lives. Amen. Today's reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, selected verses from the message version of the Bible. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. When Christ shows up again in this earth, you'll show up too, the real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity with Christ. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized, uncouth, slave and free, mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picks out for you compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. Let every detail of your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father, every step of the way. We are exploring over the course of September and October this question of, of the priesthood of all believers, that, that every one of us, every one of us, no matter who we are, where we find ourselves on our life or spiritual journey, that we are incredibly gifted by this God who is love, and that we're called to use those gifts 
to somehow help to heal the world. And when we talk about healing the world, that may look like um, healing your own relationship with yourself and in, in, in God above. That may actually look like healing a relationship between you and another, or somehow finding a way to use your gifts in combination with another to, to, to serve those within our community or within our country or somewhere around the world. Whatever that looks like, I think, is the great mystery of, 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 of what life is about, for us to somehow discover over and over and over and over again, what are the gifts that God has given to us? And then how is it that God is continuing to speak to us and in us and with us, calling us yet to be present to the needs within the world today, in this moment, that we use our presence, our gift, to bring healing to some other. It is in that that I think the great mystery of life and love and, and who God is and how God works and who we truly are is found. The reality is that we live in this world where there are all kinds of competing messages. And when our anxiety goes up and our fears go up, and all of these different messages happen, it's so easy for us to get caught up in the busyness and forget who we are and who God is and who God is yet calling us to be, let alone listen to God's still small voice speaking within and through our hearts and our lives and our challenges. There is this image, this vision, this memory that I have. I can't tell you how old I was. What I do know is that I was young enough that, 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 that I remember seeing this segment on this small little black and white TV that we had at home. So, so I don't know, it was, it was before we, 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 we had color and color became affordable. And, and, but, but I remember seeing the segment on TV. And as a young kid, I was absolutely fascinated there was this, this, this reporter, and he was interviewing this fellow. And I don't know if it was a local news segment or if it was one of those local talent show contests or whatever it was. But, but, but he starts talking to this fellow, and the fellow starts to explain that his talent is that he's able to keep plates spinning on, on these tall posts, right? And so, so, the, so, so the interview is talking to him, and he says, oh, that's really fascinating. Can you show us? And so the fellow sets up a pole, and he starts to spin it, and then another. And, and meanwhile, the two of them are talking as the fellow runs from plate to plate to spin. And there are two or three or four up, and the fellow goes back to the first one and gives a little bit of a push to keep the momentum going and keep it spinning. And, and the interview continues. But eventually, he's got six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know how many of these posts and these plates spinning, but, but the fellow becomes so preoccupied with spinning his plates that the interviewer asks him a question, and the performer just completely ignores and continues to set up more and more and more posts. And there may be 20 posts, I don't know, with plates all spinning. And he goes back and he darts from place to place and he's jumping. And you can see one plate in the corner starts to wobble a little. And he gets there just in the nick of time and he gives a little bit of a spin and it continues to stay balanced. But then he no longer does that. And there's another one on the opposite side of, of, of the space that's starting to wobble. And he gets to that, but then another and it crashes and it breaks to the floor but he keeps the other plates spinning. But, but then another wobbles and it breaks. And eventually, all of the broken little pieces of those plates that stop spinning start to create little obstacles. And it causes him to take more time to get from one side to the other and keep all of these plates spinning. And eventually, it's crash, 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 bang. And then about eight or nine plates all break at the same time. It's only then that he's able to pause and respond to that reporter's question. For me, at the moment, in the moment, I was fascinated by this fellow who had this talent to be able to spin the plates. And yet, that memory has stuck with me. And I've come back to it time and time and time again when I have felt like too often I'm that performer trying to keep all of those plates spinning. And when we feel like our lives are spinning out of control and we're spending all of our time trying to keep all of the different plates spinning and trying to prevent any of them from crashing to the ground or trying to walk through the debris of one or two or three or four in the course of our life that have actually crashed, we become so preoccupied with our agenda, with our stuff, with our trying to be successful, with our trying to not fail or be seen as a failure 
that we forget to pause and listen. The reality is in our lives, when anxiety goes up, when fear goes up, when busyness so crowds everything out, we can spend all of our time doing and doing and doing and doing and never spend any of our time being who it is that God has created us to be. We can get so preoccupied, so preoccupied in the stuff of this life all of the bitter messages that we are hearing on the TV and the internet and text messages and the videos we're seeing on Instagram or whatever happens to be the mode of communication and the news that we are receiving, that we get so wrapped up in the anxiety, the fear, and the worry that we forget to pause and truly remember who we are and whose we are and how we've been gifted to make a difference in the here, in the now of the life that we are yet called to be living. I believe that that's why the Apostle Paul writes this letter. He doesn't write the letter because everything seems to be going well in that new little church, in that community. He writes the letter because obviously there are some clear divisions. And yet, he writes the letter to those early churches to help them understand what does it mean to be truly the community in Christ? What does it mean to be the embodiment of God's love made real in this moment to be the body of a whole bunch of different diverse kinds of members gathered, gathered together by the power of God's Holy Spirit, gifted individually but collectively in some magnificent, beautiful way for us to make a difference, move beyond our preoccupation and our divisions, and ultimately begin to heal the world. It is so incredibly powerful if we go back and we look at story after story after story in our own lives, in the lives of others, in the stories of history, the people who really seem to make a difference within the world. And, and, and you can go all the way back to Moses. Oftentimes what? It's out of the challenges of life. It's out of our own hurts and the hurts that we experience of this world as we look at the way the world is hurting others. It is out of the, 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 the disappointment and the frustration and the challenges that we face that if we actually face them instead of avoid them, if we actually have the courage to confront them instead of paper them over, as we work through them and open ourselves up, it opens us up to find the gifts that we have been given and maybe the courage to make a difference. It is, remember, 40 years, Moses wandering in the wilderness before he finally is so lost and alone that he turns aside and he hears God's voice burning and coming to him in that burning bush. It is Elijah who runs in fear, right? He has to first listen. We talked about this a few weeks ago. He has to first listen. He's seeking God, it, and God is not found in the force or the power or the destructive powers of, 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 of the hurricanes or the winds or the storms or the forces that breaks down mountains or rocks. It's only after all of that has passed by and he steps out of the cave in which he is hiding before he can listen to God's still, small voice. Every one of the disciples that, get, that Jesus gathers to him, they first have to make a choice. They get called out of the busyness of their life. Fishermen and tax collectors, they get called out of the busyness of their life to put down their nets and all of the things that are distracting them in order to start to learn and to relearn who they are and why they're gathered together and sent off into the world with a purpose. There's a story that I read about. There's a fellow, he was caught up in the busyness of life and he was feeling really like life was spinning out of control 
He was depressed and angry and frustrated and worried about the world as he was experiencing it. It was around the mid-80s, and, and he wasn't quite sure what to do. And one of his friends invited him to spend some time volunteering at a hospice. E eventually, he said to her, no. Like, like, his life was already too busy, too overscheduled. He didn't have time, and he didn't want to spend one of his valuable weekends in a hospice being present with people who are on the threshold of meeting their maker. As time went by and he continued to feel frustrated and never more lost and ever more alone on his journey, his friend just simply was present, invited him again and again. And eventually he said, okay, I'll give it a try. And he went and he got his, the training and he started to volunteer and he'd spend weekends on the night shift at a hospice. Volunteer once a month. A few months went by. And what he started to discover was how much he started to look forward to that time when he was serving others in the hospice. As time went by, he began to wonder, what, what might it be like? What might it be like if it isn't all this busyness that's keeping us um, um, so preoccupied that life really is about? What if serving others was really the mystery of what this great life was about. What, what if there are others out there who are wondering the same thing about how to find greater meaning to life? And so he puts an ad in the local paper and he posts a couple of flyers at some convenience store. And little by little, people take the flyer down and cut the little ad out. Somebody actually in his small town sends it to a friend who's in Australia because they had remembered some conversation that their friend had, and they said, I think that you might be interested in this. Within a month or two, people from, from Arizona and North Carolina and the Northeast and even Australia are contacting this person, saying, we don't know what, what this is all about. We don't know where this journey is going to lead, but, 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 but we want to find out more. And so once a month, they, they start to have these conversations. The people who are local, they gather together around a table, they break bread, they have a meal, and others dial in through long distance, right? This is long before Zoom and computers and internet and whatever. And, and yet, they make the space month after month after month just to be present, to sit with one another, and to listen, to wonder. They share their stories, their hopes, their hurts, and, and, and the gifts that they actually have. Eventually, the couple from Arizona and the people from Australia, they move so that they can be part of this growing community. And they continue to do their work and teach and build buildings and do whatever it is that, 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 that helps to put food on the table. But once a month, they make space to just sit and listen and observe and wonder. It's like finally saying, you know what? Whatever is the motivation that keeps us spinning all of those plates doesn't really matter. It's okay for those plates to crash and fall to the ground because that's not who we are. It's not what our life is all about. Really, the magic and the mystery of life is for us to use our greatest gift to just come together, to be present, to wonder, and to listen. E e eventually, eventually that group of people, over the course of a year or so, they, they rent a farmhouse and they begin providing services. They form a nonprofit, it's called the Human Services Alliance. And they decide because of the gifts of the people who are present and because the needs that they hear are being unmet within their community, they bring those questions, those hurts and those hopes together. They form the Human Services Alliance, and they start providing four different kinds of services for free. They don't charge the families, they don't charge the people, and they don't charge the insurance companies. They serve for the sake of serving. It's health and wellness, things like meditation and dietary needs for those who are curious and in, in, in need education, especially those um, who, who don't have the economic means to afford to pay for a personal dietitian. Um, they provide um, counseling and a respite for those who are struggling to break free from all different kinds of addictions. They provide respite, a place, a place where people can come 
families and, um, who have children with developmental um, disabilities where the families can come and trained professionals can mind and watch and take care of the kids and the, the, the families can have a moment where they can just be and relax. And they provide a setting for hospice care for those whose families cannot afford to place them in a nursing home or some other facility. It is, I believe, the power of finally putting down all of these plates that are spinning for us to see one another, not with all of our differences, but to appreciate those differences as the different kinds of gifts that God has given us. And then for us to make space to come together as a community and say, if we believe that this God is the God of love, who creates each and every one of us in God's image, who has gifted each and every one of us, and through the power of God's Holy Spirit has gathered us here in this moment for us to have the courage to work through our challenges, our questions, our anxieties, our doubts, our brokenness, our loss, our history. But to say, what then today is God calling us to do because of who we are, who've been gathered in this place, and how might we do it in a way that brings hope and healing to this world and makes somebody's life a little more different. I believe that this is the journey that we're on. I believe that it is this moment that we are living. And I believe now more than ever, God is calling us to simply make space, to be present, to hear and share our stories and find the courage to listen. May God bless us and challenge us on this journey. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone. They got now. Listen to the face, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks and the old hippopotamus moans and groans with the big to do. The old cow just goes boo. The dogs and the cats they take up the middle. The hummingbird comes, the cricket fiddles, the donkey prays, and the pony makes the old coyote howl. Woo! All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing. Some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and pause for anything they got now. Listen to the top where the little birds sing on the melody. The high notes ringing, the hoot owl hollers over everything. The jaybird disagrees, singing in the nighttime, singing in the day. Oh, the little duck quacks and he's on his way. The possum ain't got much to say. Porcupine talks to himself. Woo! All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and pause or anything they got now. It's a simple song of living song everywhere by the ox and the fox and the grizzly bear, the grumpy alligator and the hawk above. Fly raccoon and the turtle dove. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and pause for anything they got. Now. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and pause for anything they got now. Hands of paws or anything they got now. Here comes the cow. Hands of paws or anything they got now. We
continue to not pass the plate around during this time. Um, and so you will find that there are offering plates at either of the two entrances. Um, if you have brought your gifts, you are encouraged to um, leave them there. You can mail them to the church at PO Box 147, Woodstock, Connecticut, or you can give online at Woodstock, uh, firstchurchwoodstock.org slash giving. We do give thanks for the many different gifts that people continue to knit and weave together that we may be a ministry of hope and the light of God's love here within um, and on this hill and, and, and beyond this hill so that we can touch the lives in these times which sometimes feel so dark. So thank you for the many ways that you continue to support ministry, the ways that you volunteer, you sing, you provide music, um, hospitality and cookies, crafts for the craft fair, Whatever it is, um, even just being present and sharing your prayers is an incredible gift um, to each and every one of us. And so thank you for that. Um, with that, I'm going to invite you to rise as you're able, that we sing the doxology, and then we'll, um, uh, uh, we'll sing the doxology, and then we'll move on to communion. The prayer of dedication is after communion today. Um, so will you please join me as we uh, offer the doxology this morning? My friends, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, you are welcome to join in this great feast of God's love. You need not belong to this church or any church, just desire a closer relationship to God who is our creator. Today, we celebrate World Communion, and so there are churches throughout the world, throughout Christendom, of all different makes and models and flavors and ethnicities and languages who are simultaneously celebrating communion communion in solidarity. It is one of the unique things that we all can come together and agree in and on, no matter our differences. And so as we celebrate this communion today, may we hold in prayer our brothers and sisters throughout this country and around the world that God's love may be made real in the ways that we express Christ's life in our lives, and in the love we express for one another. May God be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is always right to give God thanks and praise. We remember that even on the night when Christ was betrayed, he gathered with the disciples, the followers of his way. He took the bread. He blessed it and he gave thanks to God. He broke it open. And he said to all, take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in a like manner, after the meal, he took the cup. He again blessed it. He gave thanks to God. And then he passed it to all who were there, saying, take and drink. For this cup contains the new covenant that flows in and through my blood. It is given and shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. It is for me a reminder that there is nothing and no one that can ever separate us from God's love. Breaking open the bread, I think Christ was inviting us in so that we may be a part of his ministry and he a part of us. And whenever we are gathered together, he tells us that he becomes present within and through us. May God, may God, you bless these gifts of this table, the bread and the juice in this community as we gather together. Transform us as you have transformed the grain of the field and the grape of the vine, that we too may be nourishment to feed this hurting, hungry, hopeful world. We ask all these things in your many names. Amen. Because you have compassion on us, steadfast love, you do not hold anything back, but fill us with your good gifts. May we share from abundance as well as from our need, so our offerings might be an enduring witness to your hope, your peace, and your healing for all. Amen. Let us rise to Rabel for our closing song. It is for everyone born.
My friends, as we prepare to head out into the world, I invite you to join in sharing our benediction and then our closing alleluia. Now, go to greet the stranger and dear friend equally. Now go to share Christ's compassion with everyone. Now go to live as one as the Spirit gathers you with others. I invite you to sing our closing alleluia, to look around into the eyes and the smiles of others and to see the eyes of our God smiling back.